He served in the Confederate Army, where he saw a ton of action. He wrote letters home, one of which we discovered and are going to share with you. He spent almost a year as a POW in horrible conditions and sadly passed away just weeks before men were released. This is the story of Private James Turner. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and recently I was working on a family tree for a client and came across this amazing story of his third great-grandfather. The more that I discovered about him, the more that I knew that I wanted to share his story with all of you. Besides doing genealogy work, we make history videos for our YouTube channel, so if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. Now on to our story. James Turner was born on 18 January 1831 in Montgomery County, Virginia. By 1850, he worked at a mill which was located next to the Bishop family and his future wife Sarah, whom he married in 1852. In 1860, he was a farmer and had four children. James enlisted for three years in the Confederate Army on 15 April 1862 in Peterstown, Monroe County, Virginia, which became West Virginia the following year. He was stationed with Company D of the 63rd Virginia Infantry. He was paid a $50 bounty for joining. A few months later, he was present with his unit when they took part in the Battle of Charleston, now West Virginia, on 13 September 1862. By February, he was dug in with his unit in Southampton County, Virginia, and he took the time to write a letter to his wife. Many years later, that letter was found in the papers of James's daughter by his third great-granddaughter, Ms. N. J. Netter. Ms. Netter transcribed the letter and wishes to be cited as the source. She shared the letter online for all future descendants to cherish, and now I'm lucky enough to share it with you. Like many of her own writings, some grammar of the letter isn't perfect, but we have chosen to share it with you just how it was written. Here's the letter. Franklin Station, Southampton County, Virginia, February the 19th, 1863. Dear wife, I again seat myself to address you with a few imperfect and bad composed lines. For a soldier has a bad chance to compose a good letter whilst in the army. Our minds confused and torn to pieces that we can't write but very well. I have a very bad arm where I was vaccinated. I think that I caught a cold yesterday in the rain, and I have not felt very well since. Sarah, I hope when this letter reaches you, it may find you, as I haven't heard from you since I left home. I have written two letters before this and sent them to you without getting an answer. I sent one by McConnell, the other by mail. I will give you the state of affairs down here. Times is hard. We get scanty rations, and more than that, we have so much duty, hard duty to do, picket duty and drilling. Also, we are throwing up breastworks. We commenced yesterday, worked all day in the rain. They are at it today. I was excused today and I am in camp. My arm hurt me so that I could not work. We expect to fight every day or very soon. The enemy, it's reported, have reinforced with 30,000 which makes in all 40,000. We have but a small force here. I think there ain't more than 10,000 here at this time, but we are getting reinforcements every day. It is very wet here now and has been for several days. Hadn't been but one snow day since we come up to camp. Lieutenant Skewer got back on the 18th. I wish I had stayed until he came, which I could have done if it hadn't been for McConnell. He wanted to get his substitute in so bad he couldn't stay any longer, so I came with him. Sarah, I had the luck to draw one pair of pants, one pair of drawers, and one shirt. This is all the clothes that I have drawn yet. So I believe that I have given you all the news I have present. Sarah, I reckon you have gotten the loom out of its place by this time. Tell Asa howdy for me. Tell him to dry up and go into his hole and keep out of the way of the cavalry. Give my love and respects 
to all choiring friends. Your well-wisher and husband, James Turner. P.S. Farewell, right soon. May God bless you forever and keep my little children from all evil. Wow, how powerful is that? We often read about units, commanders, and battles, and we gloss over the conditions. Letters like these give us an amazing snapshot of what the individual soldier experienced, and I for one think that they are extremely valuable, especially to their descendants. James's story was far from over when he wrote this letter. He continued the fight and was present for the Battle of Chickamauga, where his unit fought with famous generals Bragg, Longstreet, Hood, and Breckinridge. He also was at the Battle of Chattanooga on 23 and 24 November 1863. The next day, they were in the Battle of Missionary Ridge, where they fought against the famous Union generals Grant and Sherman. His last battle was on 27 November 1863 when he was taken prisoner at the Battle of Ringgold Gap in Ringgold, Georgia. Casualties were low for this battle, with only 20 Confederates killed and 201 wounded, but somehow he was captured. On 8 December 1863, he was sent from Chattanooga, Tennessee to the 2nd United States Army Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee for chronic diarrhea. On 27 January 1864, he was sent to Louisville, Kentucky and slaughtered for a prisoner exchange. He arrived in Louisville on 28 January 1864. For some reason, he was not exchanged and on 29 January he was discharged from Louisville and sent to a prison in Rock Island, Illinois. He was enrolled at Rock Island on the 1st of February 1864. Rock Island is sometimes called the Andersonville of the North due to its brutal conditions. The winter that year saw temperatures as low as 32 degrees below zero. Over 12,400 men were once imprisoned at Rock Island, of which 1,964 died. The conditions were so bad that even 171 of the Union Guards died. James spent almost an entire year as a prisoner of war at Rock Island, and we can only imagine the horrors that he witnessed. History tells us that the conditions at the prison became much worse by the end of 1864. James sadly passed away of consumption on 16 December 1864. He was buried in the Rock Island Confederate Cemetery in grave number 1678. Just a few weeks later, over 3,000 of the prisoners were exchanged or released. James was only 33 years old and left behind a wife and four children. Wow, now we know the story of Private James Turner. What are your thoughts? Were you moved by his story? How would it affect you if you discovered a story like this about one of your ancestors? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. When we discover stories about our ancestors, especially like this one, history becomes tremendously more real. The battles that we read about or drive by begin to have a different impact on us, and we are bestowed with a deeper, enlightened understanding. Discovering and preserving stories like this is a passion of ours, and we are so proud to be able to honor Private James Turner by discovering him and sharing his story with his descendants and all of you. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.